I'm a huge believer in one-on-one -on -one therapy and with the right therapist who's a really good fit for whoever their patient is. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I think for many of us having mm -hmm. that safe space where someone really holds the space, someone of the experience, someone mm -hmm. objective, holds that really safe space for people just to open up and be vulnerable and to share, that's in invaluable. And then they can start exploring and then they can start having more awareness mm -hmm. of what it is that's mm -hmm. really troubling them. Hello, I'm Dr. Sherry Jacobson, and this is Therapy Lab, a podcast dedicated to therapy, mental health, and the art of well-being. In this episode, we are joined by entrepreneur Annabelle Wilson to talk about her story. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What are you, what are you doing at the moment? Well, I'm the founder director of Living Ashram, which is a profit for purpose startup in well-being. And we provide life science and evidence-based life tools and resources to really empower users to have positive root level up whole human health. I'm going to unpack that a little bit because it's a bit of a mouthful. And when we say root level up, that basically means from the subconscious up, 95% of our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions, and our behaviors are driven by our subconscious mind. So very often we're running long held deep patterns from that area. So, and we also mm. deal with the root causes of lack of well being from the root causes, not just only dealing with the symptoms. And when we talk about whole human health, we mean positive mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health, because everything is inextricably linked. Mm -hmm. um, I have played around with the app. I enjoy very much a lot of the, uh, the, the pillars and, and the, the, the areas that, are, that you focus on. For those who would be new to the app, what can they expect when they download it? They can expect a very peaceful place, a lot of other options out there are wonderful, but Frankly, I feel overwhelmed when I go there because yeah. there's maybe a thousand meditations, so many different options. What we did was take a real step back and look at what the medically proven, what are the highest impact practices with the greatest medically proven benefits. And those are the practices that we then created our own versions of and put in the app. Mm -hmm. So what can users expect? They mm -hmm. can expect a very safe, peaceful place where they can find the highest, greatest, in terms of highest health benefit proven practices and that are incredibly accessible and easy to fit into daily life. So our practices range from the longest one is about 19 minutes, the shortest one is about five minutes, and there's everything is very clearly explained so people really understand what's happening to them mentally, um, mentally what's happening to them physiologically, and it has deep, it causes deep, it enables actually deep shifts in mm. mindset physiologically and behaviorally as well. Mm -hmm. So what can they expect? They can mm -hmm. expect practices that they can integrate and use to support daily well-being, mm -hmm. as well as we have something really fun called Deeds of Appreciation. Mm -hmm. And they seem really mm -hmm. simple, but they actually mm -hmm. work on a really deep neurological, physical yes. and um, mindset level yeah. and they they're just really fun deeds to do they range you can mm -hmm. take they take anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes depending on how deep you want to go mm -hmm. and they serve to connect you back to back to society they bring you back mm -hmm. out and they're actual deeds that you do Yes, and I completed one this morning, and I, okay. and I was amazed that the person who I reached out to mm -hmm. responded pretty much immediately. I hadn't expected that, and it was it was quite shifting within within me as well, and I think brightened up the day. Um, so, with regards to how much time one needs to in invest in it, what, mm -hmm. what, 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 how do people use it? Is it several times a day? Can people use it less frequently? It really depends on where people are in their well-being journey, how well-versed mm -hmm. they are, how open they are to using these practices, but it's really preventative care, it's maintenance, it's self-care that's accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes when we might be 
under greater periods of stress or in, from environmental or emotional triggers, you might reach for support more often. So for example, if we're having issues falling asleep, you might do the body scan evening practice every night that week and for as mm -hmm. often as you need. If you're having really high periods of stress and you want to immediately lower your cortisol levels and your excess adrenaline levels, you might do one of the three different conscious breathing practices mm -hmm. throughout the day. And it's not practices that need to be done in a dedicated way with eyes closed. You can do it while you're working at your desk, while you're even walking around. And so it's very easy to integrate. Mm -hmm. And the other half of the app, it's not just guided practices. It's the mm -hmm. resource hub with the book recommendations, mm -hmm. articles, and videos so people can really watch that and choose the topics that really interest them at their leisure. So we don't mm. have a hard and fast rule. We do recommend, of course, conscious breathing daily because in as little mm. as two minutes, you can receive a huge raft of health benefits mm. from increased boost in your immune system, decreased symptoms of depression and anxiety, improved overall well-being and health, improved focus and problem-solving abilities. When you know all the health benefits, why yeah. wouldn't you spend two minutes of the day oh, just doing absolutely. deep diaphragmatic breathing? And experientially, I, I notice a difference too. If I mm -hmm. can remember to integrate it, how do you encourage people to, or prompt people to make it a, a regular habit or practice, the breathing and the other exercises? You, it's really just a matter of training and it's not, mm -hmm. and it's setting small and realistic goals. Mm -hmm. So for example, instead of saying, I'm going to exercise every day for an hour for the, for the entire year, that's not really an achievable goal for most of mm -hmm. us because life happens. So small steps, maybe today I'll do one minute of breathing. That's pretty, that's pretty and you can link it to mm -hmm. a habit that you're doing or do it at a set time of day. For example, right after waking up, yeah. before you even reach for your phone, it's a great one to do. Or integrating simple things on our app. We also have forgiveness and gratitude, but you don't have to do yeah. the full blown because that's a very deep practice. Yeah. You can integrate gratitude into your day from the minute you open your eyes. Three really, it can, they can be tiny, they can be huge. From the mm -hmm. minute you open your eyes, before you reach for anything else, yeah. you can do that. And when you're, last thing, when you're in your bed at night, a really lovely thing to do is, what three things do I celebrate? Yes. So it's remembering yes. to celebrate, which is slightly different. Yeah. It's slightly nuanced. It's different than gratitude yes. because that's then, yes. it's almost achievement-based, but achievement-based based on values, not achievement-based based on what somebody else's idea of success is. So it could mm -hmm. be something celebrating as, well, I had a really lovely time tucking my child in and we had a really a real giggle on uh, sharing what happened during our day. Mm -hmm. That could be something as simple as that or that you managed to get through a whole stack of admin or that you managed, uh, that you had an amazing sales call. Any of these things related to any area of your life, we forget to celebrate on a daily yeah. basis. We're already racing ahead and thinking yes. ahead the next day wow, all the things I yes. have to do, like this endless to-do list. We forget to take those yeah. moments, I'm at, at the risk of sounding super cliche, those mindful moments to integrate yeah. those into our lives. So the easiest, this is a bit of a super long-winded answer, but the easiest mm -hmm. way is to just incorporate as much mindfulness and just acknowledging, even as we go through mm -hmm. our day, even if we're putting some, as you know, taking a shower or washing our hands, just being really incorporating gratitude. So if it's difficult for people in the first thing in the morning to think of three things they're grateful for, it can be integrating it into the practices that they're already doing, their daily routine. So when you're taking a shower, when you're walking your ha washing your hands, thinking, well, I'm really grateful mm -hmm. for running water too, <laughs> and yeah. I'm really grateful for the cleansing products that's keeping me clean and hygienic. Yeah. I'm grateful that I have lights on and that I have electricity because so many people in the world don't. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting down mm -hmm. for a meal, taking two seconds or even you know slightly longer, to be grateful for, the, and there's a whole chain of people that are involved before the food ends up on our plate, from the yeah. farmer, from, from nature who yeah. grew. So it's these things, it's just taking ourselves out of our frenetic daily lives and really being more thoughtful and more aware.
I usually do, I try at least, mm -hmm. to do the, the gratitude exercise of three things I'm grateful for yeah. and three things I'm grateful for within myself. I've taken that from the Hoffman process. Mm -hmm. um, I have to try the, the celebration one, so yeah. um, that's, that's a, a, a new one to, to experiment with. Um, if, uh, so you're, you're narrating um, mm -hmm. throughout, not throughout, actually you have, you have guest a authors practices. for a few, yes. few practices. <laughs> It's very calming, actually. And Thank you. I, I, I love it. For those people, the other thing I love, by the way, is that you can select the time frame. So for the gratitude practice, mm -hmm. you can choose, and I think I chose a midway one, yeah. um, which could sort of fit in with the, 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 the time that I had, or the time that I chose to dedicate mm -hmm. it, because we always have time for this thing. It's just what do we prioritize, yeah. right? Um, so what about uh, for, for people who are... Um, and, and works wonders for anxiety in particular with depression mm -hmm. when we're really, we lack the motivation mm -hmm. to sometimes even get out of bed and shower. Yeah. How, how, does one, how do we use the, the, the tools and, and the app in, in that instance? I think when it comes to those really dark days mm -hmm. where you really feel incapable yeah. of even leaving your bedroom, it's really coming back to a place of self-love and everyone mm. has different practices that resonate more with them. So if we really dig deep and tune into our intuition, we always know what we need to reach for. Sometimes it's reaching out to via a, which you can also do on the app, there's a list, it's divided by countries, we have US and UK so far, you can reach out for help anonymously. Sometimes you don't feel like you want to bother or burden a friend or a family member or anyone else. So there's a list of organizations and some of them are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, where you can reach mm -hmm. out for just a friendly voice to hold that space for you when you're having those moments. So mm -hmm. I highly encourage everyone to reach out to anyone. There's amazing apps. There's one called Hear Me, where it's a peer-to-peer -peer listening group. It's completely free. So it's mm -hmm. by text messages as well. So I encourage people to reach out to just get that sort of anchor back into yeah. a safe space for them. I would encourage mm -hmm. them to the conscious breathing practices. They're, they're actually, we co-created and they're narrated and read out by a wonderful breathwork practitioner who has over 20 years experience in not just as a pranayama breathwork and mm -hmm. yoga instructor, but mm -hmm. has gone through deep trauma in his own life. And he was a professional dancer as well. And he's a mm -hmm. Wim Hof breathwork instructor also. So that's mm -hmm. Isaac Mullins. He does all of our breathwork mm -hmm. practices. I highly recommend that as a sort of instant calm. There's also, mm -hmm. we have, um, on our resource hub as well, what we call temporary hacks. Now, they don't work at a root level, yes. but sometimes when you have an insanely busy schedule and day, you don't have time to do that deep dive, but just knowing that you can have these incredibly quick hacks, as we call them, or biohacks to immediately lift your spirits. And there's mm -hmm. a really short, very good video on that. It's just five minutes. It was actually Tony Robbins on Dr. Oz and it, he just takes right. people through. And you can right. see from people, the way you vary even the speed of your talking and the tone, you're, you lift up. And of course he incorporates the power poses, which a professor at Harvard, Amy Cuddy, right. made very famous. And yes, that exactly. Hands so up in the air. they're not, yeah. these are what we call plasters or band-aids. And they're not the root level work, but these are the tools that people can also call upon yeah. to immediately pick themselves up and mm. stop the spiral. So when you feel the anxiety and depression spiral coming, and I think we can all feel them, mm. or even if they're already there, these are the quick hacks that you can reach for to really immediately elevate yourself. If you have a full day of meetings, if you have children <laughs> that you have to, and a family mm -hmm. you have to look after, and you don't have the luxury, quite frankly, of hiding away and just mm -hmm. healing yourself and dealing with yourself all day. These are the quick things you can do to immediately elevate mm -hmm. your mood to stop the spirals. Mm. And then you can go back and do the deeper work and look at the whys and look at the triggers and do the work around that later. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very encompassing. There's there lots of it which I haven't explored and um, be interested to do so. Um, how, is, how is COVID impacted its usage? Do you know if certain modules and in parts of it are being 
um, you used more and have you seen an increase in downloads in the app? We've definitely seen an increase mm. in downloads and increase in from businesses as well uh, who are very interested yeah. in supporting their workforce throughout mm. all of this. And there's there are common themes. So we can definitely see which practices are being utilized more. Conscious breathing is a big one. They A lot of people also like the body scans and we just introduced our guest practices where we have a series of guest residents for mm. two months and that's been quite popular as well. But the two common themes, so people really know they're not alone in this across the businesses, across people that we speak to because we do workshops as well. And that's really a lack of boundaries or between work and work-life balance. So it's really mm. teaching people how to set healthy boundaries for themselves so that work doesn't take over their lives and it becomes a very skewed existence. And the other thing that people are really feeling is a lack of social connection, that cohesiveness, that bouncing off each other's energy when you're all in the same office together. So there's things that we're doing to address that mm -hmm. as well. But those are the two biggest common challenges mm. that, are, that we're seeing across the board. Of mm. course, things manifesting as difficulty, insomnia, basically. And, but a lot of people are ha just experiencing a lot of loneliness, especially the yeah. ones who are living alone. Are you able to talk to us about how you mm -hmm. found the, the whole last six to nine months? Yes. <laughs> to the extent you're comfortable to share. Definitely. Um, funnily enough, I actually came down with, I had COVID just before lockdown, so that was great timing. <laughs> but my body was literally screaming out for rest and in a startup environment. I also yeah. have, I'm pretty much a single parent with two children who are 10 and 13. And it was, it was very intense, even for the best support in the world. Ultimately, the responsibility, the leadership, everything stops with, with me. And I needed to have, I needed to have more self-care moments mm -hmm. and more deeper rest. And that was mm -hmm. basically what the, I, if you had rolled out a red carpet, I couldn't have been a more hospitable host for the virus at that moment yeah. in time. And it really forced me to stop and to really, to really rest and to really focus on what was necessary, what was important. And so that rest period was also very welcome for us. It was it just also helped us as a family recalibrate and really enjoy mm. being together and having so much quality time together, despite the additional stresses of homeschooling and running a business completely remotely and everything mm -hmm. like that. Mm. It was still, there were some really beautiful moments. There were also some very dark moments where the mm -hmm. uncertainty, the, and of course you layer the social unrest on top of everything. There is a lot of heaviness in the world, which you're at all, if you're at all empathic, it can't help but, but affect us because as humans, we're all social creatures and we're very much mm -hmm. into community. So that was, we had some, real high points, some really beautiful family moments. And we had some, of course, frustration as well because we're used to traveling all over. But at the end of the day, we knew mm. we were so grateful for our health. We were so grateful for the things that we have. We were so grateful to be able to go back to the simple pleasures as well of even just a family walk together, you know, mm -hmm. sunshine. It was, mm -hmm. I think going into the winter period, mm. it, there's, um, there's a real sense of weariness, not, not from us, but around that I've really noticed around even going to say exercise classes, the energy is really, is lower right. because there's a weariness yeah. from the uncertainty. There's a weariness mm. of restrictions and not being as free as we once all were. So it's going mm. to be an interesting period. I think what will really help people is really coming together. I've seen a lot of community groups form, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's really beautiful. Neighbors reaching out to neighbors. And I really appreciate that. I really value the people all around us. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about how you started Living Ashram? What are, what, are, mm -hmm. what are its roots? The roots for Living Ashram are basically the result of my own journey into well-being. Mm -hmm. And I think we all reach those times in our lives where mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a major illness, sometimes it takes a car crash, uh, sometimes it mm -hmm. takes a, a, like a wrecking ball throughout your life to really make us really stop 
And for me, that was in that came in 2015. And I'd always done yoga, I'd done some meditation. So, but just because you do the practices and have a healthy, outwardly healthy life, doesn't mean you're really conscious, doesn't mean you're really aware. And in 2015, mm-hmm. life had reached such a state where I thought I really need, and it wasn't burnout, it was much more personal. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was um, on the back of a divorce and mm-hmm. it was really taking a step back and seeing, well, what happened to this fairy tale life with two children now in a position where it was not their choosing. And this is all very tragic. Mm-hmm. And I really set out on the journey to really understand I really wanted to know what was driving my patterns of behavior. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have the terminology back then. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know about the subconscious. All I wanted to do was understand what was driving these unhealthy patterns of behavior. I wanted Mm -hmm. to understand how I break through them and how I break free of them and really make very healthy choices and not just about nutrition, but in life, very Mm -hmm. conscious, very awake, choices and live the healthiest version of my life Mm -hmm. and that took me through I had done therapy in the past already Mm -hmm. both you know couples counseling and one-on-one therapy and found that very helpful Mm -hmm. but this journey of well-being really took me all around the world in areas from neuroscience every single type of therapy every single type of alternative healing practice Mm -hmm. very deep into my spiritual practice Mm -hmm. which I honestly think saved me in conjunction with everything else mm-hmm. and really opened it cracked things right open for me and i witnessed so much and so much came up things that i had repressed and it was really a journey of recovery from long held long repressed trauma both from abuse and abandonment mm-hmm. and i saw so much collective suffering in everywhere that I went. And Mm -hmm. I really understood that, look, not everyone has the awareness, the time, the resources to go on such a deep dive kamikaze style learning Mm -hmm. journey over five Mm -hmm. years as I did. And in that time, Mm -hmm. I didn't hide away from anyone. I was still running a business. I still was a parent. I was still a partner. So very much functioning in real life. And Mm -hmm. I saw and I understood that the real work always starts when we come back home. So what? that's the name, that's the reason behind the name as well of living mm-hmm. ashram because an ashram is typically a place where you go for learning, evolution, wisdom. And when you're on a, when you're on a journey uh, and a quest of some kind for mm-hmm. well-being in this case, and we wanted to bring that back mm-hmm. in a way that was incredibly accessible to everyone in their daily life where we most need these tools of support. It's very easy to be mm-hmm a wise man or a woman in a temple or in a cave, shut away from society. But when you're surrounded by the hubris of daily life, when you're triggered by your environment, whether it's work or greater events that are happening in society or in your relationship or by family members or by friends, this is when we really need the support because every single trigger that we have, every single fear, that comes up is a, it's an opportunity, it's a gift to heal whatever is triggering that. Mm-hmm. I'm jumping a little mm-hmm. bit all over the place, mm-hmm. but this is mm-hmm. this was really, we're such a mission motivated business. This is why we're mm-hmm. profit for purpose as yeah. well. 25% of all our profits fund Hestia Solace Women's Aid and UK Says No More, who are our charity partners and their specific programs to enable these targets, adult and child targets of abuse to permanently break free Mm -hmm. of the cycle of abuse and live healthy, independent lives. So this is a very mission motivated business, both on the front end to really uplift end users and to really empower them to create Mm -hmm. the healthiest possible version of themselves and live the healthiest versions of their life. We talk about a lot the journey home and it's the journey home to your healthiest self. So Mm -hmm. that's that was a real Mm -hmm. That was the real inspiration yeah. behind Living Ashram, having lived yeah. through, I think it's always interesting to hear mm. the founder's story, especially in well-being. How, what drew you to this? Exactly. <laughs> what, exactly. I, I literally walked through yeah. so many dark nights of the soul where if you look at, there's so many traditional allopathic or traditional medical treatments for things. And let's take schizophrenia for mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. There's, of course, the medical terminology and definitions of schizophrenia, but I really understood in the process of my healing work, 
what happens and how people go down those routes. And you can see almost when you're standing, you understand people who are either standing on the precipice or have gone over to madness, what triggers this. And it's just such deep, excruciating disconnection and pain. And you understand also how we can bring people back from that mm -hmm. point and the mm -hmm. healing journey. So I really, my greatest mm. wish for her, our world is mm. for a greater integration. I can't even speak anymore, sorry. Greater integration. Yeah. I don't think I can speak. <laughs> greater integration yeah. between traditional yeah. allopathic and alternative healing modalities. Mm. So it doesn't become either or, it becomes a fully integrated mm -hmm. approach. So a very much mm. functional medicine approach, a very much whole human health approach mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we're really drawing from the best available within across the sectors yeah. to have something that really works. Yeah. Because if you take any of the therapies in isolation, mm -hmm. it's not enough. You sure. can say positive affirmations all day for 20 years. And if you're not doing anything else, sure. I'm afraid that's not really going to work because you're not yeah. doing a really deep dive. And, yeah. you know, I could see that the journey requires unflinching honesty. So that ability to be incredibly honest in our, in our journey without ego, without anything when we're looking into self-inquiry. So what mm. a lot of our practices do, they're mm. just opening, opening, opening. It's giving people self-awareness, which is the beginning of everybody's healing. So just being aware of it. And then it's giving people the daily practices, the, the information as well, the resources, the learning to really integrate everything. Yep. And I think it works mm -hmm. really beautifully with one-on-one -on -one therapy, whether it's psychiatry, psychotherapy, whether it's EMDR for people. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of EMDR for trauma release and trauma recovery. I think it's an incredible modality, but I'm a huge believer in one-on-one -on -one therapy and with the right therapist who's a really good fit for whoever their patient is because mm -hmm. I think for many of us having mm -hmm. that safe space where someone really holds the space, someone of the experience, someone mm -hmm. objective, holds that really safe space for people just to open up and be vulnerable and to share, that's in invaluable and then they can start exploring and then they can start having more awareness mm -hmm. of what it is that's mm -hmm. really troubling them. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Therapy Lab. If you'd like to transform your life with therapy, get 10% off your first session with any therapist on harleytherapy.com. Just use the code THERAPYLAB when you book your session. So obviously on the topic of therapy, mm -hmm. how did you come to your first therapist? Was it a couple therapists first, individual? And what, were, what was your, your, your take on, on, on the people you worked with? This was back in 2006 mm -hmm. and a really dear friend because I was mm -hmm. starting to notice that I, I needed support, I needed help. I wasn't very, I was a bit confused. I needed help sorting through my thoughts. And a very dear friend recommended her incredible psychotherapist. And mm -hmm. that was the beginning of my inquiry. And she was amazing at helping me unpack some of the things. But unfortunately, she retired. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and we then passed on to mm -hmm. a couple therapists, which, mm -hmm. It wasn't the right fit for us. Mm -hmm. It might have been for somebody yeah. else, but it didn't really solve yeah. any of our issues. So I think getting the right fit is very, very important. Yeah. Some, and for me personally, yeah. I would wish to ask for someone who has walked down this similar path before, who's walked down this road before, and that, that was it. But then I returned to therapy again in 2013 and had a really wonderful biodynamic psychotherapist mm -hmm. who really helped me mm -hmm. unpack and unravel through the layers, who was fearless, who had really walked the road before me mm -hmm. as well, and who I needed somebody who would call me out if I was yeah. <laughs> spinning stories yeah. and, and pull me back as well mm -hmm. and hold me accountable. So she was a great partner throughout all of that. And I saw her for a few years, 
But I think as we mm -hmm. evolve and grow, sometimes it's necessary to switch as well. Mm -hmm. And right now, mm -hmm. I feel like I've graduated from <laughs> having a therapist to mm -hmm. I now have a master intuitive life coach. And I absolutely speak to her every week. We're on mm -hmm. our schedule, 90 mm -hmm. minutes. It's, a, it's, mm -hmm. it's highly necessary. Mm -hmm. So I think for anyone who's in, in well-being, it's there's absolutely zero stigma zero at all in yeah. therapy it's to me it's part of the essential support team you need in order to be a good leader in order to be a good practitioner in order to create which is what we're doing all the time from a very clean healthy space i need to be clean and healthy myself mm -hmm. so um, do i call upon other professionals absolutely <laughs> and i absolutely yeah. see that's i think that's a sign of health i don't think that's a sign of weakness and yeah. we all are i'm very comfortable mm -hmm. in vulnerability and when we i think we should be very aware it's healthy for us to be mm -hmm. aware of when we need extra support and i think we it's healthy for us to absolutely call that in yeah. and and never be embarrassed to to do so or reach for help I, that, that's a sign of health <laughs> to me Fully on board with that. That's our that's our motto as well. Everyone needs a therapist. Uh, <laughs> everyone can benefit um, yeah. from from having that support, and that it's very much a sign of strength to avail ourselves of it. Biodynamic psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. What exactly was different in it for you than traditional talking therapy? I think definition wise, you might be mm -hmm. best. I'm, uh, I'm better actually it's a new term to, to me. That than me. That is just what she called herself. Right. So it meant yeah. in practice, in, in practicality, mm. that she wasn't just limited to say CBT or a certain modality. It was being very dynamic in what you need what, and really meeting those needs in a very flexible, very organic way. Mm -hmm. So whatever comes up for you, mm -hmm. it might be recommending then from her extensive vast team, say an acupuncturist right. who would unblock certain mm. areas. And to me, I look mm. at acupuncture as very holistic treatment. Mm. I know some people go specifically for physical ailments, mm -hmm. but I will literally tell that my acupuncturist, everything that's happening in my life, as in not an ad nauseum detail, but I'm feeling a little bit unbalanced here, or I need some balancing mm. here emotionally I'm feeling I bring in the emotional part as well because that's all part of the rebalancing in acupuncture mm -hmm. and that's a very it's a beautiful holistic approach or she might bring in for I don't want to sound too woo woo here mm -hmm. but she might bring in a, a very specific type of astrologist she might bring in mm -hmm. a very specific mm -hmm. inner child therapy which is mm -hmm. I I'm not sure your feelings on mm -hmm. this but I deeply mm -hmm. believe inner child therapy is literally the ground zero and the starting point mm -hmm. for and that everyone would deeply benefit from that because that's exactly the inner the inner child within us is exactly the part of us that's being triggered mm -hmm. when we when we react um, automatically to and have big emotional reactions to and things. when you talk about inner child do you mean parent adult child kind of work or how how would did you experience the inner child work the and in, what would mm -hmm. people expect if they were to find a I an think inner child every therapist? inner child therapist is different mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. most therapists probably mm -hmm. do a big part of this in their work especially for mm -hmm. trauma based work because we acquire many of yeah. us acquire a lot of trauma in our childhood as well mm -hmm. so that's inner child work to me simply means we go through when we experience trauma from a young mm -hmm. age or even at an older age a part of us almost fragments and splinters off and develops into a distorted sense of ourselves so there are archetypes archetypes mm -hmm. that come up for us a lot of people will have a warrior archetype which comes in to protect and it's never anything malicious or negative some of us might have an inner judge, so the inner critic is a huge one that also mm. develops. And their role is always to protect the inner child, they, but they do it in a way which is unhealthy and actually creates more damage. And it's, and it's, so it's getting yeah. past these guardians <laughs> and getting to the inner child who is hurt. So when you have, when you see an adult, for example, having almost a tantrum or an incredibly big emotional reaction to something small that has just happened. Say, 
their partner is late or counsels on them last minute mm -hmm. and they just feel the surge of anger, which is almost mm -hmm. disproportionate to the act. And that is not that 20 something, 30 something, 40 something, or even 50 something or older, your old person having that reaction that is triggering all sorts of say abandonment issues, lack of self-worth issues, which didn't suddenly happen in this person at this, at this age in time. It happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And the bigger our reactions are, the more core level that inner child wound is. And I see mm. this play out time and time again in workshops and talking to many people within our sector because we all, uh, it's all confidential of course, mm. but we all share and what comes up in workshops mm. and the question of the two biggest, um, well, I'm gonna start with the one biggest. It's the, it's the issue of not feeling worthy. Mm -hmm. So a real lack of self-worth is, mm -hmm. I think, it honestly afflicts 98% of our population. And it wasn't, we can't mm -hmm. turn around and blame our parents because really they were doing the best they could. They also had their own experiences going, growing up and that's mm -hmm. generational. It just goes back so far. And as if, mm -hmm. you, if you look at any of the science and any of the medical research behind, you can now see that we actually inherit not just DNA that we carry in ourselves, but past trauma, we inherit mm -hmm. belief systems and we carry this with us. So it's a lot of work to unpick. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, mean, I think mm -hmm. therapy and one-on-one -on -one therapy in conjunction with these self practices that anyone can do, mm -hmm. it works beautifully together because we can't just rely on the therapist that we see weekly or you know, bi-weekly or maybe mm. once every three weeks, whatever the right schedule for us. We can't outsource the responsibility for our own well-being and health to somebody else, even somebody else who is super qualified. Sure. We have to take accountability. We yeah. have to do the work ourselves. And when we do these practices in between our mm. one-on-one -on -one sessions, it opens up more. It opens up, creates more awareness, and then we can show up at our therapy sessions with an incredible abundance of insights, of questions, of things to really discuss and really mm -hmm. make big strides yep. ahead. Well, Annabelle, I am so impressed with the amount of therapeutic approaches and practices and tools that you've tried over the years and integrated and have put in the, the amount of energy and heart that you've put into the app as well. Um, absolutely brilliant, and I assume it's an ongoing journey that you, you it, it's not the work is done, you continue to select the practices that, uh, that work for you. Uh, where can people uh, find the app? It's just available on all good app stores, and how, how does mm -hmm. the model work? Is it subscription-based? Thank you. Um, it's actually on the App Store as well as Google Play Store. And if you just look up Living Ashram, we are the only one there with our little blue logo and our little blue and white lighthouse logo. Oh, that's right. And it's available on a subscription basis. Everyone's warmly invited to have a two week free trial because it gives people a chance okay. to play around before they make a commitment but we're priced to be incredibly accessible. So it's $9.99 a month and under 100 pounds for the year. I, all the best with the work. We're looking forward to working thank with you. Living Ashram and you in the future. And thank you so much for joining us, Annabelle. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Therapy Lab. Do hit subscribe to keep up to date with new episodes. To find private, affordable therapy from around the world, visit harleytherapy.com today to transform your life. We'll see you next time.